ATN World News. News and inspiration with Leah Tillock. Hello and welcome to ATN World News. I'm Leah and it's great to be with you, the listeners, all around the world. Today, we really, truly do have a legendary CCM artist, Brian Duncan. And before I uh, introduce you to Brian, I'd like to give you a little mini bio. Uh, Brian truly has been one of the defining voices of contemporary Christian music for several decades. He began his trailblazing career as a member of the Sweet Comfort Band. That was in the 70s. And that was before embarking on a really successful solo career. Brian has released uh, around 20 albums, selling more than a million, and having more than a dozen number one hits like Love You With All My Heart, that's my favorite, Traces of Heaven, United We Stand, uh, You Don't Leave Me Lonely. Uh, He is a four-time Dove Award recipient and multiple nominee, and he also hosts a weekly radio program called Radio Rehab, which is a mix of music and personal insights, and it's really touching and impacting lives. With that, I'd like to say good afternoon, Brian. Okay. It's good morning in my neighborhood. I'm on the West Coast. <laughs> yeah, you're on the West. You know, I'm on the East, and so I'll say good morning then. And, uh, Brian, you know, what a... What a deep, deep contribution of CCM music and ministering uh, for for the past few few decades. And uh, for those of you, uh, maybe younger people who haven't connected to Brian's music, look it up on YouTube. His voice is stunning. Um, he has such a, a range. It's just a step above. Uh, his voice is incredible. His talent is incredible. Um, tell us something, Brian. I, I want to go a little bit and span your amazing uh, lifetime and career. So did you start off with the Sweet uh, Comfort Band in the 70s, or had you been singing before then, or what, what's the story there? Well, I started <clears throat> writing and singing probably when I was 16, and it was mostly because I couldn't play anybody else's music, so I would make stuff up. I met a uh, bass player and drummer at in the at the height of the Jesus movement in Southern California. I I left home and went to the I used to be in North Carolina and I got kicked out of college because they said I wasn't missionary material. <laughs> and I've been quirky ever since. But I came out to uh to California to see what was going on there because they were they were playing music out here that that wasn't like anything we'd heard in the past. Uh, it wasn't traditional religious uh, sounding stuff. And I was really interested in, in doing something that hadn't been done 4,000 times. And I still am, by the way. That shows. It really does. I think you're very unique. I think people would find that. And that's always refreshing because uh, God likes originals. He's, he's made us each an original and not to be a copy. The Sweet Comfort Band really um, broke ground, had a tremendous uh, impact. People, like I said, look it up on, on YouTube and check it out. His talent continued on with a, with a stunning solo career. Uh, when you started going uh, solo, uh, Brian, what were some of the things that was going through your mind and heart that you wanted to accomplish in this walk with God uh, in your solo uh, career? Well, first of all, there's an assumption that I, you know, was walking so close to God that I knew where I was going. I quit the band just because I wanted out. Uh, you know, it, it got to a point where it was predictable. And um, there were certain things, you know, I was 30 years old when I left the band and I wasn't making a living. And, you know, as hard as it is to face some of the realities of life in Um, I, I had to, I had to do something else and I quit the band thinking that my music days were over, but I kept writing songs and, you know, it's an interesting thing that God will a lot of times close the door on one thing before he opens another door. So it's, there's some, there's some real hell in the hallways if you, if you know what I mean. 
Well, there is, and I think that's why people can relate. I think you are performing, writing, creating, even singing from that place of turbulence that anyone who is in Christ truly is going to go through. Uh, that's, that's part of bearing the cross. Uh, our peace, um, uh, well, peaceful lifestyle, we can have peace in our heart now, but our, but our peace will come in heaven. Right now on earth, boy, yeah, uh, this is where the believer truly needs um help and needs to be connected. Um, you know, there, there's like 10 different thoughts going through my mind right now. You, you said you weren't necessarily uh, looking to, to do a solo. You thought it had ended, but you did go into solo, and it was extremely successful. What was going through your head? Well, you know, I, my whole life is just about, has been about where does God want me to go and what does he want me to do? And you know, he doesn't give you very much of the details on the future. You know, I read Oswald Chambers all the time as a devotional, and he, he was talking this morning about um, how following the purposes of God become more and more vague as he teaches you to be obedient in a moment. And, uh, man, I, I had no plan. You know, people would always say, well, what do you, where do you see yourself in the next 10 years? Because that's kind of, you know, we like to feel like we have a plan, and I, I really didn't. I didn't have a plan. I was I was writing songs um, because it, it helped me get through the day I was in. You know, most of my songs are almost quirky in the way that they embrace faith. I mean, that's the nature of faith, you know. If, if faith was something that you could plan, it would be... It wouldn't be faith. It would be a plan. It would be science. It would be something else. Um, and that's what's kind of scary about it. And I think it's why um, faith is so hard to embrace for a lot of people because we're afraid. We're afraid of the future and uncertainty and, you know, check the stock market. They freak out every time something happens that they don't know what the end of is going to be. I mean, but... Those are the very reasons that I continue to follow Christ through through um, every possible uh, question and circumstance that I've found myself in. I mean, even to this day, I write. I wrote a song recently called "That's Not My Story." That's just my circumstance uh, because it's easy to get confused. You know, uh, you hit a lot on human nature. Uh, some of the pitfalls, like. Well, I don't know about the future. We have to remind ourselves that the future is in God's hand. He does know your future, and he does have a plan for you, and he says to trust him. And sometimes um, people, like you said, they get confused, they get uh, frustrated, but that's why it's important for us to be in the Word. Um, I think that God uh, tells us again, trust me, I'm not going to give you confusion, uh, just just. Uh, Talk to me. Just be with me. Be in my presence. I like how uh, so many of your songs were for real and resonated. The, this song in particular, I really want to bring it up because everyone I talk to that I give it to, I say, listen to this song. It has a deep impact into their spirit. Love you with my life. Um were you planning on writing it, Ask from God, or did it just happen that way? <laughs> you know, almost every song that has has been uh, that has resonated with people over the years have been almost offhanded. You know, if I sat down to write something specific, this goes back to that whole plan your life thing. Um, you know, the songs that I plan the best and seem the most clever to me. I never go anywhere. It's, it's the ones that um, I remember the day I wrote that song. I started with, I had two chords in mind, C major and a C uh, minor seven. I'd never used a seven chord in a, in a song before. And I started with, I would like to say, and that's all I had. <laughs> that's all I had. It's like, I didn't know where that song was going to go, and but then I was. Here's where you just you on a daily basis you. It's you. You hear all these people, you know, talking about the game Pokemon Go. I don't know if you've heard that, you know, where people are just following their cell phones around. They're running into walls, you know, looking at their phone, 
And I'm going, that's how I follow Jesus. I'm always looking for, uh, the, the nuggets and the, the signs uh, that he shows me. And I mean, even back then I was, man, I was in my twenties, I think. And I was just reading the scriptures, you know, where God says, I go to prepare a place for you and I will, and I'll be back. And I remember laughing out loud. I'm going, you know, I've heard that before, you know, somebody saying, I'll be right back. And then they never show up. And I was thinking hard about, you know, why I follow Christ. And even now I think about what it means to wait on God. You know, what do we do in the meantime? You know, too often we wind up with a golden calf or waiting on God. So, um, that song is about loving somebody with your life. It's like every day, you know, it's like my wife, uh, does little things for me every day, just constantly loving me in ways that I don't always get. That's powerful. The song is powerful, obviously, uh, inspired by the Holy Spirit and, uh, people. You can, um, download it, I'm sure, from iTunes. Check it out on YouTube. It's uh, very, very inspiring. And you know what I like, um, Brian, is that, um, I mean, a stunning voice you have, incredible. Uh, mm-hmm. But besides your music, you, you have really tried to minister to people. Uh, you've said, well, I've made mistakes, so I want to minister to others. Uh, and I read somewhere that uh, one time uh, you had a ministry called Hogwash. Is that for bikers? <laughs> well, I don't know if you call it a ministry. It's, you know, I just constantly, um, making observations about the world that I'm in. And, and then I try to attach, you know, the spiritual significance to it. I ride motorcycles just for fun. And I was, uh, riding with a lot of bikers. When I wrote that book, it was just, it was called Observations of Motorcycle Madness. And it's just, it's just a, you know, a lifestyle that a lot of people have. And I, I thought there was a lot of humor in it. Much like I think about, uh, religious people. There's a lot of humor in the way they do things. And, you know, I spend a lot of time deciphering what spiritual movement is and what's just, um, the circumstances we're in and, and the, uh, society that we live in. A lot of those things influence you in ways that probably aren't spiritual. Yeah, you, you were saying that uh, you're a little bit of a humorist, so people, if you go check out his Twitter, he just went on a rant about non-denominational. You might be a <laughs> non-denominational. <laughs> the, the thing that cracked me up, because it's like you said, well, if the drummer's in a fish tank, you know, <laughs> you may be yeah. you're doing non-denominational. There, there was a whole list of them, and he does find the humor in things. And I think that you would find his Twitter very entertaining, which in a good way. One thing that I'm very impressed with, uh, because uh, I've been listening um, uh, since I knew we were having this interview to your radio rehab uh, broadcast or podcast, and it's a mix of music and your own personal insights. I think this is really exciting what you're doing uh, right now with this. Can you tell our listeners a little bit more about it? Radio Rehab was something that I uh, did in a pursuit of um, recovering from addiction. I mean, here's the ironic thing is that People assume that once you find Christ, you don't find any other things to lean on. And, you know, it was to my chagrin and surprise that even after knowing Christ, I still leaned on other things to make me feel good, you know, because God will leave you hanging, you know, on faith alone. And, you know, it's like I tell people, you know, with addiction problems, um, that it's, tr- it's like trying to get a cat off a curtain, you know. It, we have a uh, an, a built-in ability to just reach for something that that gives us a sense of stability, and nothing that we that we reach for usually uh, does anything short of you know digging us into a deeper hole. So, I mean, radio rehab was born out of my own uh, 
misconceptions and my own, um, the, the things that I excused in my life as, well, this doesn't count. Um, I went completely off the rails, you know, when I started to really take a moral inventory of who I was and what I thought and how I lived accordingly. Because, I mean, the way we act is what we really believe. I mean, and you start looking at your your life and go, why do I do this behavior? Why is this what, what I've chosen? And a lot of that is comes from a mistrust of God and, a, and a, maybe a misunderstanding of how God can deliver you. I mean, uh, it goes back to that waiting on God thing. It's like, you know, I'll build a golden calf while I'm waiting because it's been a long time. So the next thing you know, you, you've established a whole different kind of idol worship. And that's, that's very um, keen and accurate insight. Uh, and, and people, you can download this from our iTunes, ATM World News, where we will have it posted if you want to share this message with other uh, people, because that was very insightful. Uh, one uh, radio uh, rehab, one that I listened to, and you had some good insights on it, was pain. And, you know, a lot of believers are, are going through extra pain in this generation uh, with the, the things that have come upon the earth and, and things that they're dealing with. What would you uh, advise uh, somebody who's dealing with pain, like don't build a golden calf with it, but rather what? how do they handle their pain? What do they do? Well, good, good question. I don't think there's a quick answer for that. You know, I mean, this, there's a lot of people getting really wealthy, you know, making pain relievers. Um, but the thing is, you know, in the long run, I've seen that, that pain is a warning system. And if, you know, it's like lepers, they, you know, they go blind because their, their body has lost a sensitivity to pain. You know, they'll injure themselves and they don't feel it. It's like if you, your eyes automatically sense irritation and they blink and it keeps your eyes moist. Pain is a warning system. It always is a warning system. And if you look at it as such, um, at least you can embrace it. You can at least look at, you know, why it's there. And it, it gives pain a reason. It's like they say, no pain, no gain. It's like at first you have to kind of embrace the, you know, what's hurting you. And, you know, this is still part of my daily life. You know, I, one of the assumptions I had about Christianity in the early days was that it would be pain-free and that, you know, if I was really a Christian, that I wouldn't have any problems. And nothing could be farther from the truth. It says you will have trouble in this life. It's right there in bold print in my Bible. Uh, you know, after I stopped taking a flare tip to scriptures I didn't like, I hope you listened to what uh, Brian just said. Uh, Jesus said more than once that if we were a follower of him, we would bear a cross daily. We would deny ourselves, and we should just follow him. When we are in Christ, if he suffered on earth, we do. But when he reigns in glory, he said we will shall reign with him. Our, our paradise is coming. Scripture also says, for the joy that was set before him, Jesus endured his cross. He was thinking of being with us in heaven. He knew all the wonderful rewards and, and things he had planned for us, and so he endured. We should take the same heart and mindset as him. Brian, I always ask this question, and I really don't mean it to be cliché. But each person that I've interviewed, they've, they've truly done some legendary work in life. And I, I just have to ask this question. Out of your life, out of all your concerts, out of all the music, what is the one thing that you remember most? What is precious? What is a precious memory to you? I mean, um, career-wise and music-wise. You know, the most, the, the most satisfying thing um, about music is actually in the moment of, of, of doing it, it's, it's, uh, it's not the end result. Um, I think I read that too recently from one of the devotions I was reading that God is glorified in the process more than the end result. It's, it's the, 
it's the process of going through the creativity. And the most exciting part of my life has been insight, is finding a new way to look at things that I've, that I've taken for granted for years, or finding humor in it, and finding, um, I mean, that's, that's why a, a baby has that look on his face. All new. Everything is new. It's like, you ever watch your, I've got a grandkid now, and you watch her look at a bucket. <laughs> it's like, I've never seen this before. Wow, I wonder what I could do with a bucket. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely entertaining to see uh, the world through a child's eyes. And I think that God wants a, that for us, even as, in, as we're old and uh, cynical, is that he wants us to see things in a new way and see new ways of looking at the same things. And, and that's, that's what's kept me going in music and in writing. And in, cause I've written books too, uh, five second devotions. And I wrote one called prayers you won't hear in church that are hysterical because every day I see, you know, you know, the foibles of my own attempts at faith. Uh, yeah, people go to his site, his uh, website. I'm sure you offer your books from your website, right? Well, those books are hard to find now. You, more likely, you might find a a scarce copy at uh, on Amazon. I've I've been told that people have found the books there. Dear God, really, <laughs> it's a, they're they're sarcastic in in nature. I mean, they I love sarcasm because it tells a certain truth and it acknowledges that you may not have the whole truth in what you're saying. You acknowledge that there's another possibility in the truth. But, you know, Christian circles, don't they don't like sarcasm very much, and my books have never done well in Christian circles. Well, you're reaching everyone, you know, not just Christians. You're, you're reaching the unsaved, and it has its place. And uh, people, you can check out Amazon. And like I said, follow him on Twitter because uh, he is kind of hilarious on Twitter. I mean, I was laughing when I uh, scrolled down his uh, Twitter. You've had a lot of deep insights in this interview today. It's going to bless a lot of people. And I want to thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to be with us. Oh, it's my reasonable service. Amen. Thank you. And until next time, I'm Leah reminding you that God loves you. Oh, how he loves you. What I must do My word